What's up everyone, RMFH back again for another Breath of the Wild news roundup. Last week, Game Informer broke the news that they had exclusive Breath of the Wild info dropping the rest of the month, and we got a few new clips from two Breath of the Wild trailers shown by Nintendo. Even though it doesn't sound like much, Game Informer has covered quite a bit of info in the last week, and there's a lot to go over, so let's get right into the video. Starting off, we'll take a look at one of the new Breath of the Wild trailers given to us by Nintendo, along with the new screenshot and concept art given to us by the official Legend of Zelda Facebook page. Starting with the trailer, we see a guy playing Breath of the Wild in his living room. He's fighting a pink Hinox and has a whopping 17 hearts. This guy's gotta be pretty far in the game already. Also notice that there's a plus sign next to the stasis ruin, possibly indicating that you can upgrade ruins later in the game, maybe allowing the stasis ruin to freeze objects for a longer period of time in this case. Thanks to Zeltic and his Discord chat, we know this area Link is at is called Mino Island, and you can see on the map that there's a series of other islands connected to Mino Island. Fast forwarding a bit, we come to this scene. Previously shown in the box art and in the Super Bowl trailer. Here we get to see it in full detail though. Not much else to say about it since I've already covered it, so let's keep moving. Now we come to a side shot of Link from the same clip. This version of Link is definitely becoming my favorite. He looks so intense in this scene. Next we see another battle with a guardian with Link riding a horse. Again we see the 17 hearts. Other than that, there's nothing new here. Now this scene is just perfect. We see Link and Zelda riding side by side. Notice that Zelda seems to be riding some type of royal horse. Judging by the Master Sword and Zelda carrying the Sheikah Slate, this scene must be from the past. Then we come to Link and Zelda riding into the sunset, and can I just say this scene is simply beautiful. In the background we can see a structure of sorts with the horse statue in the middle of it. Could this possibly be some sort of ranch? Possibly Lon Lon Ranch? We can also see Death Mountain to the right of the structure. That's really it for this 30 second trailer, so let's carry on to the new screenshot and concept art. In this screenshot, we see Link standing in front of a stump with the Deku Leaf symbol on it. This stump has got to do with the Koroks. The Koroks do in fact give you seeds and we still don't know what they are used for. This stump could have something to do with that. As we know, there are tons of Korok puzzles in this game. What do you guys and gals think this stump is for? Let me know down below. Now we come to the concept art. With the screenshot being followed up by this concept art of the Koroks, I think it's safe to assume they have something to do with one another. On the left we have a normal Korok, and on the right we have three drawings of what looks to be a Korok Elder. Now if you were looking closely at scenes of the Master Sword in its pedestal, you would have noticed this little guy standing right behind the Master Sword. I do love the fact that even though there are loads of Koroks, Nintendo gives each one its own personality and look. Okay, it's time to cover most of the Game Informer related news. Boy oh boy did Game Informer get the scoop on Breath of the Wild this week. I'm going to start in order from February 7th until now. Last Tuesday, Game Informer revealed that for the rest of the month of February, they would be revealing exclusive information about Breath of the Wild. Note that Game Informer highlights all of this information and much more in the latest issue of their magazine, so feel free to go check out their latest issue for the full story. Wednesday, they kicked off the flow of information with a rapid-fire Q&A with Aonuma and Miyamoto. Game Informer asked 51 questions during this interview, and only a couple stood out to me as new information. First one is that Link does in fact have a last name. Link, Link. <laughs> Link, Link. All jokes aside, we did learn that Breath of the Wild takes place after Ocarina of Time in the official timeline. As I said before, I'm reserving myself for after the game launches to make a video on its timeline placement. But what do you all think? Has this info changed your placement? Thursday we got some new screenshots of Breath of the Wild from Game Informer, showing off a few different things. In the first one we see Link on a horse in a snowy area surrounded by some pretty weird looking rocks. Under the image on Game Informer's site, it says the world is full of various natural wonders. Even though this is the largest version of Hyrule to date, Zelda's game world is dense with activity. In the next clip we have Link running in a lightning storm. The more I see that lightning, the more dangerous it looks. 
Moving on to this shot, we have Link holding a huge hammer while fighting two stall moblins. Nintendo has said that enemies will attack you at the same time in this game, so fighting off two of these guys at once is definitely not going to be a walk in the park. Next we come to this epic shot of the dungeon boss Game Informer was lucky enough to fight. This boss is called Wind Blight Ganon, and is said to be one of Ganon's own. It plays dirty. He summons tornadoes to attack and uses his gun-like arm to shoot spikes at you. Last we have a clip of Beetle. Nintendo outdid themselves on his character design. From his backpack to all of the items hanging off the side of him. Even though Breath of the Wild is changing the conventions of Zelda, it's good to see a familiar face with all these changes. Finally, we come to the last bit of news I wanted to cover. Yesterday, Game Informer was kind enough to tell us everything they know about dungeons in Breath of the Wild. The first thing Game Informer confirmed is that the maps will be different. In Breath of the Wild, you will be able to see a full 3D image of a dungeon using the Sheikah Slate. The map can also be manipulated by the player this time around, allowing you to open up different pathways. Dungeons also are lacking a compass in this game. This may not be a necessary item to have this time around, as Game Informer also confirmed that dungeons are a little smaller in comparison to Twilight Princess. They go on to say that it's not that the dungeons are shallow or easy, there were just fewer avenues for getting lost. While in the dungeon, Game Informer reports that they had a guide of sorts speaking to them. Game Informer does say that the voice they heard was from a male character. So who could this be? We've heard a woman's voice in the demo for Breath of the Wild, but we've never heard a man's voice come out of the Sheikah Slate. Could it possibly be the old man from the Great Plateau? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Next, Game Informer says that this dungeon boss won't be based around a singular dungeon focused item. Similar to A Link Between Worlds, it looks like we won't be obtaining dungeon specific items in Breath of the Wild. I don't know how I feel about that as I had mixed feelings while playing A Link Between Worlds. Knowing Nintendo, I'm sure they'll make each dungeon worth the effort though. To finish up, Game Informer says that Crystal Switches will be making a return, and they go over that purple goo we've seen in previous trailers. This goo is called Malice, and you'll need to clear it from the dungeon in order to move further. To wrap it up, I'll leave you with a few screens from the new In This Destiny trailer released by Nintendo. I hope you all enjoyed this week's news roundup. I'll catch you on the very last one releasing a week before Breath of the Wild's launch. Y'all have a good one, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.